it's time to dive into another Subaru. Let's get started. Here we are again with the third vehicle with the front wheels off and the brakes apart. Well, going back together. That seems to be the theme this week, and that's fine because it pays the bills. This is a 2006 Subaru Forester, but this is a special XT model. It's kind of rare, not super rare, but I haven't seen a whole lot of them. This is the 2.5 Turbo, which has quite a lot more power than your average 2.5 liter. As denoted also by this little scoop, and we'll show you that here in a minute, but it's pretty cool how that works. It's here for several problems, but some of the costs got so high, the customer said, I think we'll just hold off on those issues, just focus on these other issues to make sure everything's good. And I fully understand that. This isn't no $60,000 car. You don't want to be putting tons and tons and tons of money into it. So let's go ahead and take a look around it and then we'll open the hood. And here we are at the front of this Forester. It does have some yellowed headlights, but that is not something that is a concern of the customer right now. Go ahead and move around to the side. You can see that we do have the front wheel off. We have new brakes going on. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And you can see that there's a lot more going on as well once we open the hood. And down this side, it's actually in very good shape. It's not beat up or scratched or anything. It has some decent tires on it, some nice wheels. These are actually pretty good cars. You go around to the back, you can see the Forester is not like a curved hatchback, like an Outback. It's pretty much flat like a wagon. I kind of like the Foresters. I really like them. They're more utility. Go around to this side. You can see it's also in pretty good shape. Let's go ahead and open the hood. So this little scoop right here is not really for air going into the engine. It's air going into the intercooler. Now remember this thing is turbocharged. The intercooler is not up here by the grill. It's right there. As you can see, this little ductwork here goes right to the intercooler and cools the air. This car has issues with the emission system. You can see that there's the secondary air injection pump there. It also has parts called air diverter valves, that are all part of the system, and it has failed on this vehicle. But once we started tallying up the price, and the price was getting pretty high, the customer said, I think I'll skip out on that. I'm not really needing that fixed right now. I just wanted to know what it was, and and now that I see what it's going to cost, I'm not interested in that. But it did run a little rough, and they're concerned about lack of power. We do have the valve covers off, as you can see down here. It had a small leak from the valve covers, and also I wanted to check to make sure we don't have any rounded lobes. And also we're going to verify the valve clearances on the tappets to make sure everything's in spec so that we can rule out there's any issues going on there. In the early years of Subarus, they are known for their head gasket issues. This one currently does not have any head gasket issues, luckily, so we're not having to tear apart the engine and do anything with that. But these are really cool engines. They're fun to work on. They're not too hard to get to some of the parts, but the turbo does complicate things on this. It adds labor time because there's lots of pieces and parts have to come off to get access to things. Parts that are not existent on a naturally aspirated 2.5. So here we have Magic Mike, he's actually diving in on the Subaru, and we've got the valve covers off. One of the things we're going to check is the valve clearances. We're just going to ensure, like I just mentioned a minute ago, that none of the lobes are rounded off. And if you look right there on the emission sticker, it actually lists the specifications for the valve clearance. We're going to verify that that's accurate, make sure we don't have to tear the cams off or do anything crazy. And then once we know everything's healthy, we could put the new gaskets on that it needed and put it all back together and continue to service the rest of the vehicle. You've already got the brakes all apart, huh? Yeah, I've done the front brake pads and rotors, got those knocked out, and working on doing these valve covers now. They're a little tricky on these older cars. Those rubber hoses tend to turn more into plastic than rubber, so it's just being careful, taking my time, trying to get it all done. Yep, we'll go ahead and get this thing up in the air. There's one more thing that was leaking oil that Magic Mike is also addressing. So one other place was actually leaking oil that Magic Mike's here is going to soon pull the oil cooler off. Let me show you guys what that looks like. 
So here's our oil filter, but up above that is a little disc shaped thing. It's an oil cooler that coolant flows through to cool the oil. And there's two O-rings there that start leaking. That is also leaking oil onto the exhaust. You can see it's crystallizing and burning the oil pretty bad. Some of that was also valve covers. So I'll do the inspection. We'll check the rest of the vehicle out, but that's definitely some of the things that Magic Mike's been working with on this vehicle. And in case you guys didn't know, he actually also has his own channel. You definitely want to check out. There's a link in the description to get to it, but he's got some really interesting videos on there. You don't want to miss out on what is going on in Magic Mike's life. So head on over there. All right, I'll let you get back to your break. Sounds good. And that's right, I sent him off to a break. These guys work very hard during the day, and when I'm filming, I don't want a bunch of hammer banging and things going on in the shop. I like it quiet, so that's why you really never see anyone in the background doing much because I give them a paid break. I say, hey guys, go in the office and just chill out for a while and we're gonna film and uh, they're making money for doing nothing. So it works for both of us. That's also why you saw Danielson walk by. He was on his way to his break. So let's carry on with the inspection here. You can see a little bit of crusty going on there with the antifreeze. It's not leaking, so what can happen here is the aluminum can actually start to electrolysize or electrolysis going on and actually can get pinholes in it. With this situation, if it's not leaking, you just leave it alone. And if it does start leaking, they're going to get a new hose and a new water neck, a thermostat cover there. Here's our oil pan. Everything's nice and dry. And here's the oil leaks we talked about that's coming from the couple of different places there. Here's our steering rack, nice and dry. It does have some, what does it say? Perrin, sway bar links, Perrin, something like that, you can see there. And there you can see the struts have some different springs and it has Petters suspension on it. All around it has these Petters struts on it. So they've done some changes that way. And then we have new rotors, new pads that Magic Mike just told you about. Again, head on over to this side. Everything's good there. Struts nice and dry. CV boots are good. Everything looks good on the front end. So many times on the Subaru, something that gets skipped is right here. It's easy to think there's the engine, there's the transmission. There's nothing in between, right? Wrong. There's a front differential right here. It has its own diff oil. It's easy to get diff oil and transmission oil mixed up too. I've seen transmissions ruined for that on these. So there's a front differential, transmission, and then back there is the rear differential. We'll get to that here in a minute. Has a nice little spin-on oil filter for the transmission, which makes services nice. You can see some oil seepage here going on. That was from the leaks up front. It was kind of spraying back here. Here's our cat still intact. It's getting kind of crunchy on the donut right there. I'm not going to push on it or mess with it. Here's our drive shaft. Everything's intact. Here's a resonator. Drive shaft again. I want to show you guys this U-joint. I always like to show this to you. I've showed it multiple times to you guys. But you can see the ring around this U-joint cap has little dots, or little stakes is what they're called. They're staked in. So if those U-joints go bad on these, you do not replace the U-joint. You buy the whole drive shaft. I've actually taken these to two different drive shaft specialists in Wichita, and they tell me two words, nope, and nope, not happening. They will not rebuild them. They refuse to. There's no way to refasten. They don't have the machine that did the staking. So they're like, well, how do we put the U-joints back in? So you have to buy a new drive shaft. It's crazy. That's for manufacturing. It's fast, it's cheap. They put it together. You deal with it later on when it wears out. Here's our rear differential. Our CV boots are good. It has, brakes are in good shape in the back. The rear struts are good, CV boot is good, aftermarket sway bar link is good, brakes are good, strut is good, sway bar link is good, and the boot is good there. Here's our charcoal canister, 
Everything's intact and our muffler. Let's check the tire. So we can see here it was the 40th week of 2019. So they are good tires, they're fairly new. Let's get this thing on the ground. Definitely wanted to give you guys a video showing a little rundown of what we got going on here and the, the work that Magic Mike's doing. Very happy for his service here in the shop. These cars are very popular, but they're popular in concentrated groups. In the middle of Kansas, there are some around, but they're not so popular. But if you go to the mountains in Colorado or various other places that are mountainous, Washington State, places like that, there's not just a few hundred Subarus. There's hundreds of thousands of them. They're everywhere. It's because they're good on fuel. They're fairly reliable. They're all-wheel drive. They have a little bit of elevated ground clearance. And this one has good power. It's a turbo. So if you wanted speed and to have all the rest as well, you could have your cake and eat it too. But I think that in the old days, people had Jeep Grand Cherokees, the full-size Cherokees, or K5 Blazers, and things of that nature. And up in the mountains, it's already high altitude, and you've got a carbureted engine, and you're getting four and five and six miles per gallon. People got pretty tired of that. And then the Subarus came along, and they were like 20 miles per gallon or more. Now we're talking. People got tired of the fuel economy of that and really liked these. They can get to the same places almost that that one can. Most people that have these are just going to work, going to get groceries. They're not doing rock climbing. They're not climbing over boulders and fallen trees and things. So that's not necessary. But all-wheel drive is. So that's why you see a lot of these in those places. If you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop, check my Amazon affiliate link in the description below. We get a small cut. Make sure to also click on the link below to check out Magic Mike's channel. He's got a lot of really cool videos going on there. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's just so many more cars coming in, which is more videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.